The show is set in Texas in 1969 and we follow a young rock singer called Jeannie Hogan. She has just had a disastrous tour with her rock band and she has been brought back to her parents' house in disgrace. So the entire play is set in her bedroom on one night. The structure of the script is that she's narrating the, her past couple of years to a tape recorder because she wants to leave her own version of the story and we see her confessing everything that's happened to her and reliving the ups and downs of her failed rock career so far and during the play we see her make the decision to leave and give it another go. Sing along to this. <laughs> she lives in a town called Coyote Creek in Texas and uh, everything about her environment is working against her. So she's living in a town where she's supposed to be a young lady and she's supposed to behave in a particular way. She's not supposed to listen to this kind of music. She's not supposed to be sexually liberated. She's not supposed to be loud. Um, but she refuses everything that she's meant to be. You have this incredibly independent woman, this woman that's ran away from home and created a life for herself that keeps getting dragged back into this, what could be portrayed as a, as a cell, a lifestyle that she will never be able to run away from. She's a woman with a lot of ambition and kind of a victim of that ambition. In Jeannie's mind, she's about to be as big as Dylan. She is absolutely convinced that she is a rock star and so I think she, there's a lot of almost like confusion about why things haven't gone her way. One of the reasons I chose to set it then was because it's immediately before a spate of three or four really important deaths of rock stars, part of which gave rise to this idea of the 27 Club, this idea that there's a maybe like a curse or um, bad luck that rock stars die at 27. Jeannie is really inspired by Jan Stoplin, um, who was a big influence because she was also born in Texas and was also fighting a lot of the same things that Jeannie is. I think when I first read the script I was incredibly drawn to the fact that as well as having a number of different bases to it, so the historical periods, America, late 60s, uh, the rock and roll culture, the music behind it, the idea of what these people are like in their personal lives, there's a real dreamlike quality to the way in which Jeannie describes the places she's been, the people that she's met. I wanted 1969 because I felt that it would really give the feeling of something that was dying away, which fits with Jeannie's story. There's a lot that's slipping away from her that she can't get her hands on. But she is now. She is a modern woman. She is as modern as she can be. So in terms of popular culture that we have right now, everyone is quite fascinated by the kind of the cracks that are shown in celebrity. However, we don't really often see the full, slow, backstage, you know, workings of what brings a star down. Behind the scenes, behind the paparazzi, behind the newspaper articles, behind the reviews, what real people lie underneath that celebrity. It's something that we can't avoid, it's something that it's there and we're exposed to it. But you're never actually in the room with them. When a celebrity has a meltdown, you see the reported side of it, but you never see the personal side of it. And so I think there's something really perversely attractive about watching that on stage. When we workshopped the play, there was a huge range of responses between I thought she was brilliant to I loathed her from the second she walked on the stage. I don't mind if people don't like her, they will need to care about her. She is a live wire, she is a brat, she's a performer, she is a lot of different things but what she's not is boring. And Jeannie's character embodies all of those in one poor broken little girl who has found success and through hard work and through talent and through the desire to be the best she could be, not for the sake of running away but for the sake of getting herself and certainly a family a better life. It would be really great to help the audience experience that journey, to kind of feel like they've met those people, to feel like they've seen those places 
really ideally I want people to come away from this feeling like she was a real musician and to go away and want to go and look up her music and listen to the birds of prey, see the kind of some of her performances, her gigs. I think she will be your perfect princess that every 16 year old girl wants to be and having that ripped away from you on stage is tragic and beautiful at the, beautiful at the same time. And because we're really watching someone in her private space, I want the audience to come away feeling like they have been moved by what's happened to her and that maybe also that they, they got to see something they wouldn't otherwise see. There's something in it for everyone. You're watching the intimate moments of essentially someone who has reached some level of stardom and fallen again. But at the end of the day is fundamentally about a fairly lost woman looking for a way out of a small town in America. 